everyone and welcome to The Ellen Show. We have a very special day planned for you. First off, we're going to start out by talking to our special guest who is a very inspirational scientist who has paved the way for many other people. And later on today, we're going to speak with her colleague who has somewhat of a different side of the story. Let's start out with um, an English biophysicist, Rosalind Franklin, who's here to tell us about herself and her latest discovery. Hey. Hi! Nice to meet you! Nice to meet you! Thanks for having me! Oh, thank you for being here! So, can I call you Rosie? Yeah, of course! Alright Rosie, tell us a little bit about yourself. What was it that got you so interested in science? Well, when I was 15, I first knew that I wanted to be a scientist. And I later went on to get my PhD in physical chemistry from Cambridge University where I learned x-ray diffraction techniques that I could apply to DNA fibers and they provided me an insight to the structure of DNA. Okay, and so after that, what was it that you did after you got your degree? I worked as a research associate at the King's College in London in the biophysics unit where I was taught more about x-ray diffraction techniques and after working there for a while my student and I, Raymond Gosling, went on to make an amazing discovery. Really? Uh, what was this discovery? Like, tell us more about it. It seems really interesting. Well, we discovered through different pictures of DNA that there was two forms of DNA, a dry form A and a wet form B. So this is, I guess, where your very famous Photo 51 came from? Yeah, I noticed in the B form of Photo 51, and we were able to gain the best insight of the structure of the DNA. I acquired this photo from 100 hours of x-ray exposure from a machine that I refined myself. Can you describe your procedure for taking these photographs? Yeah, I used x-ray diffraction, and that can determine the arrangement of atoms within a crystalline molecule. First thing you need to do is obtain a crystal that is large enough to observe and also uniform. Next, the beam of x-rays is shined through the crystal and the beam strikes the electron clouds of atoms and they are scattered and the scattered beams can be observed on a screen and placed behind the crystal. And then a 3D picture can be created based off the angles and intensities of the scattered beams. The mean positions of the atoms in the crystal can be determined by the electron density information. One image is not enough to determine the structure, so the crystal must be rotated through angles up to and beyond 180 degrees. Wow, it sounds like a very hard task, and I bet it took a lot of hard work. Um, did you ever publish these findings? Uh, well, Ellen and I uh, personally never published anything, and this is where a little controversy comes in. Uh, my colleague, Maurice Wilkins, he... <coughs> took my photos without my permission and gave them to another scientist, James Watson, who was working on his own DNA model with Francis Crick at Cambridge University. That's really unfortunate that all of your hard work was just taken away from you like that and you didn't even have the chance to receive any credit. Yeah, and that's not even the worst part. Crick and Watson used what they saw from my photos for the basis of their famous model of DNA, which they, uh, published and later received the Nobel Prize for. They were able to take most of the credit for the finding when publishing their model in Nature magazine. They included a footnote acknowledging that they were stimulated by a general knowledge and we all know that that general knowledge was from my hard work and photos. So. Yeah, I bet that's really hard for you to be just kind of tossed to the side like that and not have any acknowledgement. Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for coming in today and having the strength to share with us all your struggles and hardships. Yeah. And I hope to be hearing from you soon, and hopefully you can have a lot more discoveries. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was yeah. fun. It was very nice to meet you. Next yeah. up, we're going to talk to Rosie's colleague, Morris Wil Wilkins, and so we'll hear his side of the story. Yeah, all right. Thank you. back from commercial break. I'm here on location with scientist Maurice Wilkins and he's going to tell us about his work with our dear friend Rosie. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here to talk about my work with Rosalind and our contributions to science. My pleasure. So Maurice, please tell us a little bit more about yourself. So I grew up in New Zealand and got a physics degree from St. John's where I worked with John Randall in improving radar. And I also studied DNA with Medical Research Council of Biophysics research unit. 
Earlier I spoke with Rosie about how there was a little bit of a controversy between you two, but now I'd like to hear your side of it. So Rosie and I were colleagues, and I wasn't really excited to work with her. So upon the discovery of her photos, especially photo 51, I took them to Watson and Crick, where we worked on the image of molecular DNA strands. Well, I guess you could say that karma kind of came back to bite you because even though you were awarded the Nobel Prize along with Watson and Crick, they kind of gained all the spotlight while you were just kind of forgotten about. Well, this interview is over. I'm out of here. Well, that's awkward. So anyways, on tomorrow's show, we'll have Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, and we're giving away a house. Goodbye, everybody. On the beam strikes the electron clouds of atoms, and they are scattered, and the scattered beams can be, be placed. Oh, shoot. <laughs> what? Can you describe your procedure that you took for taking these photos? God dang it! <laughs> <laughs> Research conflict. Conflict? <laughs> oh. radar. And I also studied DNA. Austin. What are you doing?